What does the performance of your system really mean and how should we test it? Often when we talk about performance and performance testing, we mean other things like usability and scalability. So let's take a look at software performance, performance testing and its relationship to usability and scalability. What types of performance tests can help and how can we use them as effective development tools? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the video, hit like as well. I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsors, Harness, Equal Experts, Octopus and Specflow. They're helping us to develop our channel, so please check their links in the description below to support them. If you'd like to see more on performance testing and how it fits into your deployment pipeline, check out my training course, Anatomy of a Deployment Pipeline. The details are in the description below. The idea of the performance of our software is not always straightforward. There are lots of aspects of software performance that matter to us, and we tend to lump these together under the banner of performance testing when we're testing those. Strictly, performance testing is about two things, throughput and latency. Throughput measures the rate at which our software systems can process information. How much stuff can we deal with over a fixed period of time? The maximum throughput of a system is its bandwidth. Latency is very different. It describes the time between the initiation of an action and its result. How long does it take stuff to happen? These two things are often related, but they don't have to be. We can have low latency systems with high throughput and high latency systems with high throughput, as well as every other combination. Often though, these ideas do come together in the form of responsiveness. As a user of a system, almost any system, uh, it will feel much nicer to use if it's responsive. And as a user of such a system, it's not my job to care about how many other people are using it at the same time as me. So I'd like to, re re to remain consistently responsive, even if the load on it is high. That's your problem to sort out. That means that it's probably easier to achieve all of this in systems with both high throughput and low latency. That isn't all that there is when it comes to responsiveness, but we'll come back to that later on. So, throughput and latency are useful technical measures and form a good basis for measuring performance. For real high performance systems, trading systems for example, throughput and latency are certainly the measures to focus on. The problem for these sorts of systems is the precision and crucially the reproducibility of our measurements. This gets us to two key ideas in performance testing. Our ability to control the variables sufficiently so that we can get results that we can understand and the performance of our performance tests. I once consulted for a very large company. They were working on a massive complex software system. This system was being built by over a hundred teams, one of which was a performance testing team. They asked me and several other people to help them interpret the results of their performance tests. They'd run their suite of performance tests on four separate occasions, and the results were so varied that they couldn't figure out what they meant. Unfortunately, on each test run, they'd run their tests on the corporate network. So, if somebody was watching Breaking Bad in their lunch hour on Netflix and 20 people were downloading Linux distros at the same time, that, the likely, that was likely to affect the test results. There was no way to know and no way to control for these unexpected and unknown things. The result was that their test results were meaningless and not sensibly comparable. Any form of test needs to operate in controlled circumstances. That's pretty much the definition of a test, really. That means that we must control the variables. This is vital for performance testing. If we want meaningful results, we need to eliminate variance. 
My preferred way to focus on this in performance tests is to establish pass-fail tests. If you just aim to collect the data of the perf test runs, then you can end up where my big client did. Lots of data and no information. For some kinds of performance tests, these pass-fail tests are incredibly difficult to achieve though. But the discipline of taking a pass-fail approach forces us to think about the reality of our results. What do they really mean? If we can't get repeatable results in our tests, our tests are meaningless. People have a penchant for end-to-end -end tests. This is just as true for performance tests as for any other kind. The problem with end-to-end -end tests of all kinds is that the bigger and more complex the thing that you're testing, the more difficult it is to understand the results and to eliminate the variables. If I run a whole system performance test for a system of any complexity, then there are all sorts of things that will change the results. Was that web page in my browser cache in both runs of the test? Was there other traffic on the network at the time? Was somebody else testing some other behavior of the system that might interact with the one that I'm testing while my test was running? Was the hardware software configuration the same on both runs? Were all of these things the same as we will run in production? Did the operating system decide to defrag the disk or run other housekeeping tasks in the middle of the test run? All of these things are going to screw up the results. In an ideal world, if we ran the same test twice on the same version of the system, we'd like to get the same results. In the real world, we won't. So the more we care about performance, the more control that we need to exert to try and take and at least limit the differences. Infrastructure as code seems like a good place to start, but also dedicated test infrastructure, dedicated networks perhaps, certainly as you get to the serious levels of performance and performance measurement. When we ran whole system performance tests at LMAX, uh, when we built our financial exchange, we had a dedicated performance test environment. That was a precise clone of our production hardware, at least for the performance critical fast path through, through the system. We locked down the configuration of our operating system so that it was close to a real-time Linux configuration, meaning that it didn't do too much housekeeping during the working day. We tuned our system so that it never did garbage collection during the working day either. We recorded the worst hour that we saw in production and then instrumented it so that we could scale it programmatically uh, to multiply the load. Every release candidate that passed through our deployment pipeline was evaluated at five times the production load of that worst hour. This gave us a fair degree of predictability, but even so, it was still difficult to get reproducible results. So we created threshold-based tests and then tuned the thresholds to try and allow for some variance between different test runs. There's another, actually more powerful way to control the variables though. We can reduce the scope and so the complexity of what it is that we need to measure. That's the role of component performance testing. Instead of deploying a whole system, we'll focus our measurement on a single component of it. We choose parts that we know to be performance critical and measure these pieces. This allows us to eliminate lots of the variables. We can measure the raw throughput and latency of isolated bits of code. And if we're careful and design these bits to be deterministic, we can get much closer to repeatable results. So the thresholds that we pick for latency and throughput can be tighter and so give us a much clearer picture. The big downside with these sorts of tests is that they're testing to find problems where we expect to find problems to be, rather than finding unexpected problems. So you probably want mostly component level performance tests because they allow us to control the variables, but with a few of the much more complex whole system tests that hopefully will find any surprising things that otherwise you might miss. For high performance systems, I'd advise that you think about adding both types of these tests to your deployment pipelines. Setting values for the thresholds is important and it takes a bit of work, 
Most of the role of component performance tests is to act as performance regression tests. If I commit a change and it breaks a component perf test, I can think about how to deal with it. If I didn't mean to change that part of the code, I could back out the change. If I was just being lazy and didn't think hard enough about the performance of my code, I can think harder and better optimize it now. Or maybe this is one of those changes that means something more than that. Maybe this piece of code now needs to do more work than before. So the performance thresholds are no longer realistic. So I'll need to reset the values in the test and think very hard about what this means for the system as a whole. These are powerful tools to support the development of high performance systems and focusing on controlling the variables sufficiently to achieve reproducible results is an effective strategy to improve the precision with which we can measure these results. The trouble with these kinds of tests is that they will need to be fast. If you focus on this kind of component level benchmarking in particular, you'll want to achieve reproducible results, you'll need these to effectively be performance unit tests. Even if you don't, it's often the case that it's harder to write the performance test than it was to write the code that you're measuring. We screwed up so many times when building our exchange on this that eventually we came up with an answer. Test first performance testing. The problem is that you write some fast code, then you write a performance test to show how fast it is. You run the test and you find that the results are much slower than you hoped for. So you start the performance debug game, profiling and analysing the data and the results, and you start to eliminate the complexity, gradually reducing the code that you're actually testing to try and figure out what's going wrong, until you get to the point where there isn't any code left at all. And what you've found out is that your test is the problem and it's not fast enough to be able to measure at the rate of the thresholds that you set. So write the test separate from the code. Run the test first against a stub that does the absolute bare minimum that you can get away with, only enough to make the test executable. Hard code return values, whatever it is, just your aim is to first confirm that the test can measure at the rate that you'd like to assert. And only once you know that do you plug in the real code and measure it. I mentioned earlier that throughput and latency are often only proxies for what we really care about, usability. If that is the case, if that's what you really care about in terms of performance for your system, uh, then there are some very good starting points that define what usability really means. The perception of you, the usability of our system in performance terms is a very well understood thing. It's been around for a very long time because this is really a function of our biology. It doesn't change. Your users will perceive the quality of your system based on these latency numbers. They will think your system is excellent if you're, you can respond in between 0 and 150 milliseconds. They will think that it's good if you respond between 150 and 300 milliseconds. They will think that your system is poor if it responds between 300 and 450 milliseconds. And they will think that your system is unacceptable if it takes more than 450 milliseconds. This is useful stuff to know. You can build these, these into your assumptions for the performance of your system. This is your execution budget. You can use this as a starting point, subdivide the time and define the time limits for each com component in the chain to, get, to process a, a request and get an answer back to the user. These are the thresholds for your component performance tests. This is one place that mechanical sympathy can help having an understanding of the theoretical limits of your hardware and systems, knowing what's possible can guide this thinking. I explain that stuff in more detail in this video. If you can't meet these usability targets, then you can use tricks to keep the users informed of progress. Users will still perceive your system as being responsive as long as you communicate to them within these timescales. They like to know that work is underway. They understand that work might take a while. That's why the hourglass cursor and the progress bar were invented.
Once we have the ability to measure throughput and latency, we can start thinking about other types of tests that might be interesting. What are the limits of load for my system? How scalable is it really? Well, if you have a whole system performance test along the lines that I described with programmatic control of load, you can run tests and then progressively ramp up the load until you see signs of stress in the system. We used to run scalability tests like this once a month at LMAX over a weekend. If you have a done a good job of performance testing, component performance tests will give you great protection against reductions in performance, performance regressions if you like. Whole system testing will help you to spot the unexpected and allow us to load test and look for signs of stress. We used to use these sorts of numbers to help us plan when to upgrade our hardware or scale out our software. Recognising that when we say performance tests, we often mean usability and responsiveness, focuses us on measuring the right things. Performance testing is a bit of a black art. It's difficult to do it well. And this is primarily because of the variability of our systems. So control the variables. Think about that consciously. Concentrate on accurate, repeatable measurements. And that will steer you on a course to doing a better job. Thank you very much for watching.